These are some commercial wireless headphones that I bought for my PC. These could go up to 100 meters and are using radio frequency modulation to send the audio signal. You connect this part to the PC and this will send the audio to the headphones wirelessly. I thought this would be good for me, but are not. The main problem is that it uses direct FM modulation and demodulation. So this is actually working the same as an old analog radio and the main problem is the hiss sound. All the time there is a hissing sound and the receive signal is not that good quality. Even more, sometimes there are interferences and the sound is distorted or overlap with something else and I really don't like that. These headphones were not exactly cheap, so I was expecting at least Bluetooth connection. So that's why today I will make my own headphones with Bluetooth connection and the other specifications the commercial headphones also have, such as volume control and recharging. Using the connections that you will see in this video, you could place the circuit inside of a commercial headphone case. But for this project, I have 3D printed the case. It will probably not look as good as a commercial one, but at least it will be homemade. In this video, I will show you what amplifier I've selected for my headphones, the speakers that I tried for this project, how to make the Bluetooth connection, the charging circuit for the battery in order to make the headphones portable, and show you how to make this entire project. So make sure that you check the connections below. Also that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. This episode is sponsored by the PCB manufacturer company JLCPCB. Their main services are the 2 layer PCBs for only $2. Also 4 and 6 layer PCBs, the SMT assembly process where you will get the PCBs with all the components already soldered in place and also the SMT stencil for soldering SMT components with solder paste. The quality of the PCBs is amazing, I use their services all the time and always get good results. For only $2 you have 5 PCBs of any color that you want, so go to glcpcb.com Upload the Gerbil files of your design and order the PCBs in just a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. First of all, I know, these headphones might be a little bit too big. But don't worry, I placed below some STL files for printing that are a little bit smaller and better looking. This was just the first version design. And if you want, just place the same circuit inside of an old headphones that you don't use anymore. Anyway, these headphones are using direct Bluetooth connection. This small transmitter here will be connected to my PC to the USB connector for power and to the jack audio output. It will then connect to my headphones and send the sound. The headphones will have a small Bluetooth audio receiver inside and an amplifier and two speakers. They will also have a USB input for charging the batteries. So plug here any 5V USB charger and then the battery will charge up in just one hour. We also have the volume control and the on and off buttons. The case is 3D printed with PLA for the solid parts and flexible material for the soft cushion. They actually work pretty good, but this is after I've tested a lot of configurations, so for that let's start with the beginning. Remember some time back I've made my homemade Bluetooth speaker. That project was using this small Bluetooth receiver. This can easily connect to a smartphone and receive the audio data. But in this case, for this project, I don't want to connect to a smartphone or any other Bluetooth device. I want to get the sound from my PC, and usually desktop PCs don't have Bluetooth. So that's why I've searched for some of these Bluetooth audio transmitters. So this was advertised as a Bluetooth receiver and transmitter, but I wasn't able to make this transmit audio from the 3.5mm jack. So maybe this is called a transmitter because it has a microphone integrated. So the next module that I've tested was this one, and this worked pretty well. It has two jack inputs, one for receiver and another one as a transmitter. But I also found a smaller module. This one also worked very well. You power this up with 5V from the USB connector and then you connect the audio jack to any audio input. It will automatically enter into transmit mode and the LED will turn red. It will connect automatically to any Bluetooth device that it founds around 
and that it has no password and it has the same frequency. So that's not really a good thing, because it could connect to anything. But anyway, once connected to the receiver, it will always select that one first. Ok, so on the other side, as a receiver, I also have different options. First I thought of using these small clone AirPods that I don't use anymore. But these are a little bit strange, because they work in pair, have a very small battery and require password, so this won't work. Next I have these two Bluetooth receivers. This one is from the past tutorial and I know that it works. And this other one is the same but a little bit smaller. So I've decided to use this small one for this project. It will only cost you a few dollars. Let's first open it. So as you can see it has its own battery, it has a charging circuit and the output for the audio. Then it has three buttons, for increasing and decreasing the volume and for turning the device on and off. My idea is to solder thin wires to the push buttons, the left and the right audio channels and to the 5 volts input for the charging circuit. So now we have the transmitter and the receiver, next we need an amplifier. So I've tested a few, I have these 4 here. We don't need powerful amplifiers, because these are just headphones. So first I bought this module made with a TPA6120 Hi-Fi amplifier, because this was advertised as an amplifier for high quality headphones. I've tested it and it works. The problem is this IC needs dual polarity supply, so VCC plus and VCC minus. So that's not very easy to get, especially for portable speakers with batteries. With only one polarity supply, the sound is saturated, so I won't use this IC for now. So next I've tried this other two. The small one is based on the TDA1208 amplifier. It sounds quite good, but very very low. That's why for now I've placed this aside and tested more amplifiers. But the same happened with this one. This is a preamp for microphones, and I've used this a lot for other projects. The sound is ok, but as before, it's very low. So finally I've tested this basic amplifier based on the PAM0803 amplifier. This is not a headphone amplifier, and it could go up to 3 watts, which is way more that we need for some headphones. But believe it or not, together with the 3D printed case and at low volume, this amplifier works quite well. So that's why I've decided to use this one. The volume could go a lot higher, but if you leave the potentiometer at around 20% volume, it sounds very good for some homemade headphones. When we close the 3D printed case and soundproof it, it will sound a lot better. Ok, so the Bluetooth receiver has its own battery, but the amplifier doesn't. For that we need an external battery. I will use one of these LiPo batteries of 4.2 volts. We also need to charge up this battery as well, so for that we need one of these charging modules. This will charge the battery and also protect it of overcharge and over discharge. From this module I will solder two wires for 5 volts and connect those to the Bluetooth module charging port. So in this way, with one USB connector, we can charge both batteries at the same time. Ok, so get the schematic from below and let's make the connections and test it. I connect the Bluetooth module to the amplifier. Then I solder two speakers at the outputs, one for the left and the other one for the right channel. I solder a push button to the middle button of the Bluetooth receiver. Then I solder the battery charger to the battery. Then from the output of the module I solder a black and a red wire, and the red wire is connected to a switch. From the switch we connect this to the amplifier. From the 5V pads of the USB connector, I connect wires to the 5V input of the Bluetooth receiver, in order to charge that battery as well. I connect a small USB Bluetooth transmitter to the laptop audio output, and supply it with 5V from my PC. I power up the entire receiver circuit and the connection will be made automatically. Now I play some audio from my PC and there you go. So now I know that the circuit works, it's time to assemble the speakers. 
remember that you could use some old commercial headphones for the case, or just print the 3D design. Also remember that the final version is a bit smaller and with better details. So get the 3D files and print them. All parts are printed with PLA, but the two round cushions. You have to print this in flexible material. In this way, this will be very soft and won't hurt your head. The first print that I made was with 10% infill and it was too soft. The second ones were printed at 20% infill and with 3 perimeters and they will go very good. To make sure they will last longer, you could apply some transparent silicone on top. I've printed the other parts in black PLA. We have two main cases for the speakers. Two arcs to hold these cases. Then we have the head, big color and two smaller colors. Finally, we have the back closing part of the main case and the flexible cushions. So these are all the 3D printed parts that you need for this project. Sandpaper a little bit each part. In my case, I've also used some spray paint to make them look better. I've used some black color and applied a few layers. If you also have a primer, this will go even better. You can use multiple colors if you want. As for the speakers, I bought a whole kit, with all kinds of speakers and sizes. But finally, I've decided to use the 0.5 watts ones. So solder some thin wires to the speakers. Now we can glue the speakers inside of the main case. And I do that with just a little bit of hot glue. Now the speakers are in place. We can connect the rest of the electronics. On one side we have the battery, the charger, the Bluetooth receiver and the amplifier. On the other side we will have only one speaker. So if this is too unbalanced, you can place the battery on the other side and pass some wires for power. Now connect the battery to the battery charger. Also take out the LEDs from this charger and then you can solder other LEDs with wires. In this way we can place these LEDs on the case so we can see when the battery is charging or it is full. So now using some hot glue, we place the battery and the charger inside of the right case. We have a hole for the USB connector of the charger. We also glue the charging LEDs on the exterior of the case. From the USB charger output pads, connect the positive output to the siding switch, and from this switch to another red wire. This switch will turn everything on and off. Now connect the Bluetooth receiver to the amplifier. Then supply this amplifier by connecting ground and the red wire from the sliding switch. Remember that we will have two wires that will go to the other side of the headphones for the other speaker. For that I will use a nicer wire. I make a small hole on the top side of the right speaker case. I pass that wire and then I tie it into a nut so it won't get out. I glue everything inside of the right case using some hot glue. So at this point you have to decide. You could use the push buttons of the Bluetooth receiver for volume control, or just make another hole in the case and then pass through that hole the potentiometer of the amplifier. In my case I've soldered 6 wires to the Bluetooth module buttons, and then I'll add 3 push buttons on the exterior of the case on this top 3D printed part. So with these buttons I will turn the module on and off and control the volume, and I will leave the potentiometer of the amplifier at around 20% power. I connect some push buttons to the wires and then I glue them in place on the exterior 3D printed part. So now as you can see I can control the module with these push buttons from the outside. Now get the 3D printed arc and some screws. You should tie the screws on the inside like this. Do the same process for both sides. Before I close the case I add another LED connected to the Bluetooth module, so I would know when the connection is made. So I place this LED on the exterior as well. Then I fill the entire case with some cotton pads for sound insulation. This will make the speaker sound a lot better. If you have a better material than cotton, use that. At this point you can close the 3D printed case. First I add some brass threads using my soldering iron. Just hit the part and push it inside of the plastic. Then you can close the case using 3 screws. Next add another screw to the top side of the 3D printed arc. To this we can connect those small colors. So add a washer and a nut. Then the final step of this assemble process is to connect the small colors to the big color. I've designed this in such a way that the small colors could slide in and out, so we could change the height of the headphones. 
I've done the same for the other side, but didn't close this case yet. So now connect this other part to the color as well. Make a hole and pass the speaker wire. Measure the length of the wire and then tie it into a nut inside of the case, so it won't get out. Solder this wire to the second speaker. And now you can close this second case as well. So now we have the main shape of the headphones. What I've done next was to cover the speaker hole with a thin material, so dust won't enter and the speaker would be more protected. So I glue this material on top of the case. Once the glue is dry, I then glue on top of this material those 3D printed flexible cushions. These are actually quite soft. The new design has a different shape, since behind of the ear there is a little bit more space, so we need a cushion to be a little bit taller behind the ear. At this point you can make the final touches. You could paint it if you want. You could add some protection over the head color so it won't hurt our head, and so on. Now for the test. Power on the headphones with a sliding switch. Then push for 2 seconds the Bluetooth button, and that will put the receiver in connection mode. Now connect the Bluetooth transmitter to the PC USB connector for power, and then the jack to the audio output. The connection will be made automatically. Now play the music and enjoy. When the battery is low, just plug in any 5V USB charger and wait 1 hour or so. While charging, the red LED is turned on, and when the battery is full, the blue charging LED will turn on. Use the buttons for volume control, or to change the song if you are connected to a smartphone. So guys, this was my design for the portable Bluetooth homemade headphones for PC. You could always try different speakers, amplifiers, and different designs for the case for better results. You could find some more expensive planner speakers for hi-fi headphones, that could cost you around $100 a pair. This seems to give you a lot better results, so have that in mind. Check all the links and connections below. And if you like this video, give it a like, and if you are new, consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. So thanks again, and see you later guys.